Like the lurkers that attacked the people of Egypt in the biblical days, so has the destruction been across our farmlands with the invasion of fall armyworms. Despite repeated assurances from officials that the invasion is under control, farmers continue to reel under the pressure of these novel pests devouring their crops. Initial stage of the infestation, you, it may look to be like the ordinary if, uh, guinea, uh, on, on, ordinary worms that do affect our crops. But get to the later stage, you realize they destroy everything, unlike the uh, army worm, the ordinary army worm who do affect the maize. But this one, they, uh, they infest and destroy everything. My name is Joseph Opokogapo, and in this edition of Hotline Christian Rampaging Soldiers, I take you on a tour of some farming communities to assess the level of damage that these pests have caused to fields and how farmers are struggling to recover. Additionally, we will be asking the question about how this would impact government's flagship planting for food and jobs policy. The pests enter the maize and chew them up. Then the maize turns red. There are some of those pests on my farm. I have a three-acre farm. I have used some chemical on it already, but nothing has changed. I've never seen these kinds of pests on my farm since I started my work as an extension agent. They usually hide in the corn. They chew and defecate in it, disrupting the growth of the corn. My three and a half acre farm is more than two months now. They should have been ready for harvest by now, but because of the pest, that has not been possible. Pest attack is a major threat to food security all over the world with an estimated one-fourth of crops reduced being destroyed by them. African farmers have battled pests for several centuries now, including the African armyworm. But for the first time last year, the fall armyworm, a pest native to the Americas, invaded Africa and Ghana, destroying crops beyond salvage. There is a, a paper that I read that had attempted or that had done some characterization using molecular techniques and they, they, they found two strains actually in even America have two strains what we call the rice strain and then the maize strain and they found both strains in in, in, in Africa uh, the people also suggest that these strains are genetically distinguishable but morphologically they are quite identical and the, the, when they, they did the molecular analysis they found two halophytes, and the, the presence of the two halophytes suggests that we possibly have both strains from the Americas in Africa. But the presence of the two suggests that they might have come in multiple introductions. Because one introduction possibly would have brought only one of them. But the fact that we have the two, at least they might have come in two introductions. The name fall armyworm is deceptive. They are not exactly worms. They are the caterpillar or young versions of moth or butterfly. They feed on more than a hundred plant species, including maize, rice, sorghum, cocoa, vegetables, and cotton. Fall armyworm has a voracious appetite and can reproduce and spread quickly, given the right environmental conditions. Fall armyworm is uh, a creature which arrived on the shores of Africa 
only two years ago from North America. And in a very short space of time, it spread all over Africa. This problem is not only in Ghana, it's reported in Uganda, it's reported in Kenya, and many other places around uh, Africa. And we in Ghana are having our fair share of this outbreak. They are called four armyworms because they mainly emerge and destroy crops in northern and southern America during the fall season or autumn when temperatures are fairly warm to cold. And when the attack crop fails, they march along the ground like a vast army of worms in search of more food. After mating, female moths lay egg masses of 100 to 200, usually on the underside of leaves, and within a few days, the young larvae emerge and start feeding actively. They are very, very um, reproductive. They, they, they produce quite quickly. In fact, the adult female lays 150 to 200 eggs per time and can lay up to 1,000 eggs within eight life, like within eight lifetime. The eggs um, mature quite quickly. Within 10 days, you, you have the, the 10 days or so, you have the larva, the young larva, which there and then begins to, to devastate crops. So their reproduction is also very fast and they can do dominate an area within a short time. Uh, some of these Lepidopterans, they have diapers where, especially when the environmental conditions aren't conducive. They, 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 their development ceases, like they, 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 they stop their development for a time. But they, these guys are able to develop all the time. They, they, don't, they generally do not have the diapers characteristics. So that is also the, the, the other thing. And then the, how they, they reproduce. If the, the adult female wants to lay, it, it lays in hidden places underneath, maybe at, at the, at the uh, back of the leaf or in the, in, in the, in the funnel of, of, of the plant. So normally when you want to spray and you want, you want to control with contact insecticides, for example, then it, it wouldn't be effective because they are mostly hidden. And they are also not quite active, especially the larvae, not quite active during the day. They're active during the night. So if you also target your control mechanisms or control practices during the day, then you are, you, you are missing them because they can hide and they, they, they can, they're also active when you are not active. The first time farmers in Ghana saw the fall armyworm invasion was last year. They destroyed an estimated 4,000 hectares of crop fields. When the rain stopped and the farming season ended, they vanished, only to resurface in March this year at the start of the rainy season. As at the end of April 2017, government claimed an estimated 1,500 hectares of farm fields had been destroyed. Listen to our Greek minister, Dr. Akoto Ousuefriye, address a media briefing earlier this year. Dr. Ousuefriye promised the devastation will be over soon. So we are confident that by Friday, these chemicals will be out to mm. the districts that are affected. And the districts affected, most of them are in Brongahafu region, Ashanti region, and parts of Western region. We continue to monitor the situation and we are sure that by the weekend the spraying will start in earnest to be completed in a matter of days and the experience that we gained from last year was that the, the, the army worm is very sensitive to the chemical that we are going to apply and we are confident once we have adequate application we'll be able to eliminate the danger. He gave the following reassurance in this joint news interview. And this is very limited. <laughs> Army worm, as of last week, had destroyed a thousand, uh, nearly 1,400 hectares. That's all. <laughs> we are talking about hundreds of thousands of hectares in this country. But it's under control. We've been in the field, you've seen them spraying. The areas that they've sprayed, the, the army worms have been killed off. We are, we are still distributing. So by the end of this week, the whole, all the, the districts, all the farms affected would have been sprayed and that will be the end of the end. But that was not meant to be. 
Deputy Agric Minister Dr. Sugri Bambagni gave the following update when he appeared before Parliament on the 12th of July 2017, putting the figures of affected fields at more than 100,000 hectares. Currently, the full army worm has spread to all the 10 regions of Ghana and is estimated to be affecting 112,812 hectares of farmlands with an estimated 14,430 hectares destroyed completely. We had a uh, report from the Ashanti region on army worm invasion, uh, specifically in the uh, Ejusu Dwabin. Affected uh, cocoa farms. Later, we had information when our team from the regional administration, NADMO, and the MOFA visited the area. They saw that the worms are spread to other cross farms, that is uh, maize. Uh, we are talking about maize, we are talking about um, uh, other crops. And so we managed to send a few chemicals to the Shanti region for them to start uh, spraying. And later, when we send information to all the regions, alert to all the regions to be alert on this uh, army worm, we later had a report from Brown Hafu and Ashanti region. All 10 regions of the country have recorded incidents of fall army worm invasion. I took a tour of some affected areas. Let's begin in the central region where more than 1,500 hectares of farmlands have been destroyed. In the Asin South District alone, the farms of about 250 farmers growing about 4,000 acres of farmlands have been destroyed. District Chief Executive Derek Oswambro says the invasion is getting out of hand. Actually, we have a district uh, committee and I'm the chairman for that committee in charge of the control of this army worm infestation in our district. And for now, we have about 80 acres of farmland. It's totally destroyed by this fall army worm infestation. And uh, though we are doing our best, government has supplied chemicals. We also form a district uh, spraying gang. But since the rate at which the infestation is going is getting out of our hand, I don't know whether maybe there have been some sort of resistance to the chemicals that we are using at the moment. The farmers we've been spraying, but day in day out, you see reinfestation. The ones that we sprayed, you see the, 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 the worms reinfesting that same farm. I don't know whether maybe it has got to do with the, 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 the eggs. It could be that maybe the eggs, the chemicals do attack the, 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 the worms, leaving the eggs. So the new eggs hatch and there's reinfestation. So I think we need to do more research about this kind of infestation. The, 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 the worms look simpler, but the rate at which they destroy it and the mechanism at which they attack the farms, I think there's a sort of resistance that we have to have a, a, a second look at. Yeah. We need to have a second look at the, the chemicals that we are using. The ones that we have on our district, We've been spraying, the farmers have been spraying, our gang are always on the field. But that, these same farms, you see reinfestation. Kofi Jamra is one of the farmers whose fields have been destroyed. He laments repeated application of recommended chemicals have not helped stem the destruction of his two acre corn field on which he invested more than 4,000 cities. Uh, I feel when quite as yet, I buy a baby, I mean, when no friend I'm doing now, my checks. I mean, to be control. I've been farming for 13 years now, but this year, something they call four army worm invaded our farms. I didn't say none of my father became one to call. I remember drew my boy by him, my boy, more than 13 times from the infancy. My yay, in this idea of one, so that I send me no more car can you know, Munti, I'm a me. I said, my bread, and the third farm. I've applied chemicals on about 13 different occasions, but still, I've really suffered. They have destroyed three of my farms totally. Two and a half acres. Omari, 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 it's going them. Most of the farms that have been destroyed belong to farmers who benefited from subsidized inputs and the government's planting for food and jobs policy. 
Asin South District Agric Officer Jacob de Graftsaki is concerned farmers may not be able to recoup the investments. This is uh, a farm, a beneficiary of one of the uh, planting for food and jobs uh, program. Yeah. Over here he's planted about uh, two and uh, uh, three acres of uh, the hybrid seed that Pana 12. Unfortunately, the fall armyworm menace has affected it. So this is uh, a beneficiary of the uh, planting for food and jobs. And we are hoping that uh, this one will not go, uh, is not going to affect the yield in such that it's going to affect the payment. Already every farmer is supposed to pay uh, half the cost of the input that was given. So they have paid. But we are hoping that the control will be so effective that it will be able to help them to get enough to be able to pay the rest of the input costs. Under the planting for food and jobs policy, farmers have supplied inputs at one fourth the price. They are expected to pay another quarter of the price once they harvest and sell. As since South District Chief Executive Derek Osu Ambrose is urging the Agri Ministry to relook at this and exempt affected farmers from repayment of the investment. In, in natural fact, in natural fact, more than 50 percent of the infested farms are destroyed. There's only some few cases, like from here, we are going to Asin to start the secondary school, yeah, after that one, because maybe they started earlier, they started earlier, you see that the, 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 the crops has recovered, but most of the farms, you spray, you spray, and all the day, they are just, they are just destroyed by the earth. It's like uh, true government support, planting for food and jobs. The farmers were given the seedlings, uh, the seeds, they were also supported with uh, fertilizers, though they paid a quarter of the total cost. Now, the, the, the expectation was that they will harvest and pay back after they've, after, after they've harvested whatever they sow. But right now, coming to uh, effect this infestation, whereby their farms are destroyed, the farmers, they are, they are so worried. You could see from the farmer that we, we, we interviewed here, they are worried. And their fear is where are they going to get money to, to pay back to uh, the agri offices where they took their supplies from. So I think government has to have a second look. Those farms that were infested, we have to get the statistics and see how best we can support them. Else, they, they will be very hot. The Asen in Suta Senior High School owns a 14-acre maize farm. They are hoping to feed the students from this field. But the army worms will not allow that. That is why we have been doing. The school has just started a boarding school. And for us to be able to feed the student, we have been going to uh, maize production and other crops. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the project we have been doing. So how has the army worm infestation affected what you are doing on the field here? Yeah, it's, it has affected us a lot because initially we, we had a very high infestation rate. But we have to resort to some chemicals from the chemi uh, what, open market, and that really helped to some extent. But you can see from the field that we still have the infestation there. Mm -hmm. So we still have some of the army when, you know, roaming about on the field and doing further destruction, despite the yes, chemicals. Sure. That if you can check from the field, you see that there are so more of them, even though we have done the application on several occasions. How much have you invested into? efforts to control this which appears to have gone down the drain about how much well, we spent almost 400 Ghana cities on controlling the uh, outside what the government has given us mm -hmm. what do you envisage will be the consequence if the whole thing is not really brought under control in terms of the devastation on the field yeah we, i think that will affect our food production rate and that is it means we will not be in a position to have enough to feed the student and the repayment of the uh, what the loan or the input that we had from the government to would be a problem. I continue my tour to Dentra Wawase in the Herman Lower Dentra district. I meet Deborah Beng, a mother of three. Deborah has been farming for more than 20 years now. She educates her children and feeds their family through this profession. But this has been a terrible season for her. 
She has lost the more than a thousand cities. She invested in the fields at the start of the planting season. I have lost a two acre farm. More than two acres farm, no. But I invested about 100 cities in fertilizer and other inputs. This is money I will not be able to recoup. We have made a loss. We will weed and replant the fields and see if we will get anything. Mante Sachi is also a farmer in the Dentre Wawase area. He lost a two acre maize farm. I'm going to buy two acres. Okay. I'm going to bro. I'm bro. And you do have a bad time, but in a free time, you can have a bad time. I'm going to buy one time. I'm going to buy one month time. My farm is two acres. One month after planting, then the pest started invading the field. I felt so sad because I spent money and bought chemicals, but still, they killed the plants. When a Greek minister, Dr. Akoto Ousu Efriye, addressed the media over the invasion in May, he announced a 16 million city intervention under which all affected farmers will benefit from a free mass praying exercise. But on the ground, the situation is different. Alex Tobingedu is a Greek extension officer at Dentre Wawase. He says more than 200 of the 500 farmers whose farms have been destroyed there have not benefited from the supply of chemicals. This year, most even some of them... Uh, up now, they are not recovered from what the shock they, 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 they got. Mm -hmm. You know about how many farmers in this community have been affected? In the, oh. the, 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 the more than 500 farmers. Okay. More than 500 farmers. Okay. But are there some of them who have still not received the chemicals? Oh, yes, yes. About one third. Okay. More than one third. Okay. Uh, okay. What will be appealed to government in the light of all this? Well, I think those who lost their farms have decided to uh, go in for another season. That is manual season, who started um, in August. So we appeal to the government to bring us more chemicals. So before the farmers start the farm, they have the chemicals. So when they, they came, then the, the farmers were able to spray against them. Some compensation be necessary? Oh, the... yes. I think uh, as uh, the, this farm was uh, two acres. Mm -hmm. So I think if the government will bring them some compensation, that will be fine. You can get an infestation of ant fallen worm on your farm. What is important is that we find ways to prevent it and also when, when, when it infects the farm, we also combat it. So it's a mixture of a lot of tools that we're using. Some is good agriculture practices, some good agriculture practices, some fiscally early detection and also spraying it. We haven't been cut pants down. The reality is that you always get invasive pests coming to your country. Because like uh, it is a famous school, you don't need a visa to get a mosquito to come to yeah. your country. You know? But the key issue is that we have a contingency plan. These things will always come up. The key issues are how best you address them. And that is what we are currently doing. Okay. But see, most importantly, whilst we're addressing it in this present, within this present context, we're also looking at other biological, other, other biological control measures. How? Well, I mean, you've got to do some research. In fact, last week, there was a major FAO conference of all African regional countries. In the, in the, Were you there? No, I wasn't there, but one of my colleagues was there with the Deputy Minister, uh, Honorable Odo. And I'm proud to say that Ghana, Ghana, was, Ghana was, was allowed to uh, present the way it's gone about combating the fall. So you're saying we're a success story? The key is that 
whatever sterling efforts we are putting into this thing, it also depends on how our neighbors, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, and Togo d'Ivoire, Togo, Burkina, also otherwise works. Otherwise, it, it, whatever we're doing, because if they're not maintained, plus ninety, if they're not maintained, they will, we will still get pests flying to that country. So there's also a regional coordination, which is also very critical.